Hi, and welcome to Revelation for Revolution. This is a Bible study that was written by Brandon Houseworth, and the PowerPoint presentation and narration are by Richard Tracy. Revelation for Revolution, a study that will change your life. So what is a revelation? An act of revealing or communicating divine truth. The second thing that revelation is, is something that is revealed by God to humans. What's a revolution? A revolution is a sudden, radical, or complete change. It's a fundamental change in the way of thinking about or visualizing something. You see, revelation exposes truths. It causes a radical change in our thinking and in our lives. As we learn more about God, we see what we need to do in obedience. A radical and complete change happens, and a revolution is birthed by revelation. So as we study these scriptures, we ask that you would open your heart and not only your heart, but open your mind as well, as we explore deep truths that will reveal who God is and what his plan is for us. We're going to look at the power of the name. Mark chapter 16 and verse 17 tells us, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. So signs follow believers. One sign is a dominion over devils. The name of Jesus Christ has power over the demonic. Matthew chapter 12 tells us, and in his name shall the Gentiles trust, and they did trust in Jesus' name. John chapter 1 and verse 12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So we need to believe on the name of Jesus Christ in order to become a son of God. John 2 and verse 23 tells us, Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover in the first day, many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did. John 3 and verse 18 says, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So condemnation comes from not believing in the name of Jesus Christ. We must believe in the name. John 14, verses 12 through 14 tell us, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. There is power in the name. 
Jesus tells us that we have power in prayer by asking in Jesus' name. His name is powerful. Authority comes from his name. Let's take a look at a couple of biblical questions. Does the name of Jesus Christ have dominion over the devils? That's a yes or no question. Think about. And the answer is yes, that name does have dominion over devils. In prayer, what name are we instructed to use? You got it. Jesus. The apostles and believers in Acts chapter 3 verses 6 and 7, then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. You see, there was healing of a lame man which came by the name of Jesus Christ. In Acts 4 and verse 7, And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have you done this? The answer is given to us in Acts chapter 4, and verse 10. Let's check it out. Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand before you whole. So by the name of Jesus, healing came. Acts chapter 4 and verse 12 tells us, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. There is no other name. The name of Jesus is above all all names. Acts 4 and verse 30 says, By stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child Jesus. So signs and wonders prayed for in the name actually come to pass. Acts 10 and verse 43 says, To him gave all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. So believing is obeying. And if we believe, we will obey what the scriptures say. Ephesians 1 verses 20 and 21 tell us, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. So the greatest name is Jesus Christ. All other names are under the name of Jesus Christ. His is at the top. Philippians 2 verses 9 through 11 tell us, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So the apostles and believers knew that Jesus 
was a name above every name. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 12 tells us that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and ye in him according to the grace of our God and our Lord Jesus Christ. And the name is healing in Acts 4.10, salvation in Acts 4.12, signs and wonders in Acts 4.30, and remission of sins in Acts 10.43. Let's take a look at some questions. Peter gave the lame man the name of Jesus Christ and he was healed. Is that true or false? That's right, it's true, according to the Word of God. What is the name that's above all names? You got it, it's Jesus. Let's take a look at the name of the Father. Now back in the book of Isaiah, chapter 9 and verse 6, we read, For unto us a child is born, Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So Jesus is that child that was to be born. Jesus is wonderful. Jesus is a counselor. Jesus is the mighty God. And to make it even clearer, we read Jesus is the everlasting Father. He is the Prince of Peace. You see, all of these are attributes of Jesus Christ. John 5 and verse 43, Jesus said, I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. So Jesus Christ came in his Father's name. Now let's look at the name of the Son. In Matthew 1 and verse 21, we read, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. You see, Jesus came to save sinners. According to Luke chapter 19 and verse 10, Jesus said, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. John 20 and verse 31 says, But these are written, that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. Now let's take a look at the name of the Holy Ghost. In John 14 and verse 26, Jesus says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. We need the Holy Ghost to teach us. Luke 3 and verse 16 says, John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Jesus will baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire. Matthew 28 tells us about the instruction that Jesus gave in verses 18 and 19 when he told them, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. 
Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them, how? In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. We are commanded to baptize in the name. Jesus tells us to teach and to baptize all nations. How? In the name. Let's take a look at some biblical questions. We are not commanded to baptize. Is that true or false? Well, according to what we just read, it's false. The name of Jesus Christ is above all names. True or false? You got it. It's true. We need, first of all, to repent. We all need to ask God to forgive us and turn from our sins. John the Baptist preached repentance. In Matthew chapter 3, he said, In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And in verse 3, for this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Jesus preached it. Matthew 4 and verse 17 says, from that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Peter preached repentance in Acts chapter 2 and verse 38 when the people wanted to know what they needed to do to be saved. Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of of the Holy Ghost. Repent means to think differently or reconsider which results in a change of behavior. Thayer's Greek English lexicon tells us it means to change one's mind, for example, to repent, to change one's mind for the better, heartily to amend with abhorrence or with hatred of one's past sins. You see, change comes from the inside out. And we cannot get clean, then come to God. We must come as we are. That's the way we come to God. Let's take a look at some questions. Jesus preached, you must repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Is that true or false? You got it. It's true. It does not matter if we repent just as long as we believe. Is it true or false? It's false according to the word of God because Jesus said we need to do it. Let's take a look at baptism in water. Matthew chapter 3 and verse 16 tells us, And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. You see, as an example, Jesus was baptized to fulfill all righteousness. In Mark chapter 16 and verse 16, Jesus tells us, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. We must believe first, then be baptized. For believers not to be baptized is tantamount or equal to disobedience of a clear, unmistakable command. 
If Jesus said it, we should do it. Luke 24 verses 47 and 48 tell us, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem, and ye are witnesses of these things. We need to preach repentance and remission of sins, which is baptism, in the name of Jesus Christ. These commands were given to the disciples. Here we see them obeying Jesus and his instructions. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 37, Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, how? In the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Acts 2 and 41 tells us, Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about three thousand souls. They were baptized immediately. Those that gladly received the word did what? They obeyed the word. Acts 8 and verse 12 tells us, But when they believed Philip, preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, what did they do? They were baptized, both men and women. So those that believed were baptized. In Acts 8 and verse 16, it tells us, For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, speaking of the Holy Ghost, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. In Acts 10 verses 44 and 45, we see where while Peter Yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them which heard the word, and they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. See, Peter preached Jesus, and what happened? The Holy Ghost fell. Then Peter said, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we have? What did he tell them then? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. You see, Peter was Jesus' chosen disciple whom he gave the keys of the kingdom to. Acts chapter 19 and verses 1 through 5 tell us, And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, finding certain disciples. He said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We've not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, under what then were ye baptized? And they said, Under John's baptism. And said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. Well, when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Paul was baptized and then baptized others in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's take a look at some more questions. When believers heard the word and were instructed to be baptized, what name were they baptized in? You got it, the name of Jesus Christ. What is that name that's above every name? Yes, it is 
Jesus. I have three exciting questions for you. If you could repent right now, would you? If you could be baptized right now, would you? If you could receive the Holy Ghost right now, would you? You see, the name of Jesus is absolutely necessary for every aspect of the believer's walk, from the initial believing to baptism and continuing a consecrated, which means holy or set apart, life. Colossians 3 and verse 17 tells us, And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. This life that you're hearing about and reading of is the best life ever in the name of Jesus Christ is powerful and when applied in all areas of life it will make radical changes. This life is a new beginning like no other. We need to walk in the light and stay close to our Father in heaven. Why? because he loves you. Here's some spiritual wisdom for your future growth. First of all, we need to pray daily. You see, conversation with God must be first. And we need to ask God to give us a passion to pray. The second thing that we need to do is to read your Bible daily. Using a Bible reading chart will help you stay consistent and take you all the way through the Bible. The third thing we need to do is attend church regularly. We need to treat it as a place where we will get help and strength. And last but not least, we need to listen to good preaching and teaching. There are some places where you can even go online to do that. www.brandonhouseworth.com or www.apostoliclive.com have some great videos that you can see where the preaching of the Word of God is going forth. Enjoy them. And last but not least, we want to thank you for taking your time to go through this study of the Word of God with us. May it be a blessing to you, and may your life be radically changed into the creature that God designed you to be. We love you, and God loves you, and we want the best for you.